What's up, you amazing people? It is I, Anima, and it's that time of the week again where we do our Smasher Pass sale video. And again, I'm going to need your guys' help to let me know which is the best option for you. This time we're going to have about six options, uh, six or seven, and we're going to try to stay in around $12, but we're still going to try to go with that same format that we've been working with. It's been a lot of fun to do it, and I'm really curious what you guys think. There's some amazing video game sales going on right now. So, you know, I'm not going to go super crazy. Instead of doing 10 $10, we're gonna do $12 or around there now I do have some video games that I do want to talk about before we actually get into it just so I can bring some attention to them now they are games I'm not really gonna review or talk about but they're games that are on a really good sale right now and we're gonna start off with Persona 3 and Persona 4 now you can buy the bundle for 2608 which is definitely worth it I'm playing Persona 4 right now I absolutely love it but I mean this is a game that's over a hundred hours or if you don't want to really commit to both games you can get one of the games for $15.99 and either way I think you want to go ahead and take this deal up especially if you're an RPG fan. Encryption is another game. Right now it's on sale for $14.99. This game is amazing. It starts off as a card game and just goes deeper and deeper and deeper. There's a lot more content and a lot more that meets the surface with this game. Another one that doesn't really get much recognition is Plants vs. Zombies. The game is really cool and you know typically it's pretty expensive so I get it but right now it's $5.99 which I think is a really good price for that game and then finally the game I'm always going to talk about until more people play it Immortal Phoenix Rising is only $11.99 right now this game is amazing I really really love it if you're a fan of Breath of the Wild and that kind of style then you should definitely get it it's funny it has all those things that we love about the Zelda like games and even Ubisoft themselves say like yeah this was heavily inspired by Breath of the Wild it's our version of it so to speak so it's not like I don't know they're not ripping it off and lying about it? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why that matters, but it does. So for option one, we have Castlevania Advanced Collection. Now this game is typically around, I think, $39.99, something like that, but right now it's $11.99, and for me, it's definitely a smash if you like Castlevania. If you don't, I guess that, yeah, don't get it, but it, it's a good game, and it's a good collection of games, I should say, that I actually had a lot of fun with and didn't expect to enjoy them. Now option two, we have probably my favorite game of 2021, and that is a game called Death's Door. And it's $9.99. And it's just fantastic. Like, this is one of those games that gave me confidence to play Souls-like games and to play more difficult games. Because this game is difficult. Don't let it confuse you. It is incredibly hard, but it's fair. It's very fair. And they have things like permanent upgrades, weapon upgrades, and the controls are incredibly responsive. As well as each one of these bosses that you fight, they have this deep lore about them. As well as your own character being rather complex themselves. And to go along with... With Death's Door, I figure let's stay in that weird zone and let's go with Creepy Tales. Now, Creepy Tale is a game that is almost like a puzzler, side scroller type game where it is very weird, very difficult, but at the same time, once you get the idea of solving the puzzles and how to do it, it's incredibly rewarding. Both of these games are that. They are rewarding. They will give you a little bit of difficulty at the beginning, but once you kind of ease into it, by the time you beat them, you're going to be really proud of yourself. Now, I have to smash on both of these. I have to say that Creepy Tale was a game that I didn't think I would like. I did it for a review uh, not that long ago actually and really enjoyed it and of course Death's Door, how can I not? Like that's my game of the year from just a couple years ago and you know all together you're looking at about $12 so option two for me is total smash. Option three Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, and that comes in at $4.90. We have This War, which comes in at $1.99. Beat Cop, which is at $1.99. And The Sword of Ditto for $3.74. Now, all of these games in their own right have some sort of claim to fame. But let's just start with Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, which is arguably the most popular game here. It is a classic beat-em-up. If you like beat-em-ups, if you like Scott Pilgrim, if you like video games, you probably want to check this out. And typically, this game is around that, like, I believe it's $12 to $15 range, somewhere in there. So for $4.90, basically $5, bucks, we will call it, it's definitely well worth your time, if nothing else, than just to experience it. $5 that's the price you pay at Starbucks, so why not have this, you know, experience wrapped up under you? Now, 
This war is another game that recently, let's just say since a, a certain war has broken out, seems gotten more and more attention, and it really does tell a very complicated story about your morals and ethics when it comes to wartime. Hey, do you trust people? Do you help your neighbor? Do you save it for yourself? How many people are you going to let die? How many people that you care about are you going to take care of? All of this stuff really matters, as well as you got to be on your heels, because there's bad guys everywhere. Like, not only just, you know, enemy troops type thing, but scavengers, thieves, thugs, all around you, as well as the biggest enemy of all, and that's just despair. That's disease. All of these things are an, a, a giant concern, and so this game really does break into a lot of that. Now, right now, this game is $1.99, and we're gonna look at Beat Cop, which I talked about just, I think, like a month or so ago. I love Beat Cop. Beat Cop is a ton of fun. Basically, you just go through the average day of an 80s movie bad cop, <laughs> or good cop. You kind of decide how you choose to run your, your cop, but you, you basically uh, do patrol around your neighborhood, and you, you, know, you have a couple groups of bad guys that you might have to associate with including cops themselves but it's definitely like 80s inspired it's got great pixel art and really really good writing and storytelling although it can be a bit offensive i gotta be honest but it's a really fun game and the sword of ditto is a game that i just started playing recently it is very much like a zelda like in so many ways except for there is a cap so i want to get past a lot of it because we've got a lot to go on but i just want to say it has great graphics and there are upgrades dungeons things of that nature nature, but you only have 24 hours before you actually have to fight the final boss, so you have to decide how best to do that. Going quickly through them, I'm going to say Scott Pilgrim vs. The World for me is definitely a smash. This war is actually a pass for me. I just didn't really enjoy it, and I know like the $1.99 price tag is really good, but just sometimes I don't want to carry that kind of um, beat cop. $1.99, that's definitely a smash. Great game. And the Sword of Ditto at $3.74, haven't beaten it, but I'm playing it now, and it, so far... It's looking like a smash. On to option four. We have Loop Hero for $5.99. Is it wrong to pick up Girls in Dungeons for $3.99? And Evergate for $2.49. Now, Loop Hero, I think a lot of people may know about, but it's sort of a set it and forget it kind of game where you let your character just go in a loop. Now, you're basically brought up in this weird void where you have to re start restoring and rebuilding your world, your universe almost. But at the same time, with every loop, you gain more resources. You also fight more enemies. And this can either be advantageous or this can be a giant problem for you to depending on what type of enemies you're fighting on, and if you get any sort of, uh, you know, health restores or anything like that. Now, I will say, I love the hell out of Loop Hero. It's a lot of fun, and it's one of those games that I didn't think I was going to like until I actually played it. Uh, it. Just that idea of, like, going one more loop, one more shot. Let's get just a little bit more, and a lot of times it can be too many and you end up dying, but it's a lot of fun for $5.99. Is it wrong to pick up Girls in Dungeons? Is typically $39.99, and right now it is $3.99. It's an action adventure dungeon crawler with some very odd humor but it's actually not that bad it's actually a pretty decent game pretty funny um the combat is pretty good it's basic like it's an action adventure type button mashing game like you know it, it, it's got it's not without its its perks but also it's got a lot of flaws in itself as well and evergate is almost it's a puzzle game that plays a lot like ori in the blind forest as far as visuals and from you know navigation from point a to point b in a lot of ways it is a definite puzzler but it will challenge you and in, in different ways the way the character moves for instance is you jump you pinpoint where where you want to go you target it and by connecting with a surface it'll either propel you or repel you in a certain manner and that itself gives it a lot of complexity to a lot of these puzzles so anyway um and that one is 249 like i said uh so with loop hero that's definitely a smash for me i just really enjoy it it's a lot of fun uh is it wrong to pick up girls in dungeons though at three even at 399 i'm gonna have to say it's a pass like i tried to like it i tried to enjoy it there just wasn't enough meat on the bone really for me it seemed almost like fan service i don't know I, and i i really feel like i'm wrong there i really feel like there's more depth but i just can't find it and evergate i think for a lot of people it would be a smash but for me it's a pass because it's kind of boring <laughs> and i know that sounds wrong it's just it's difficult and it does offer these complex challenges but just nothing i really enjoyed so on to option five we have fell seal which is 8.99 and typically it's 29.99 we have monster energy the Cross three something something. It's two forty nine. It's typically twenty four ninety nine. And we have American Fugitive, which is typically nineteen ninety nine, and it is now one ninety 
in it. Now, Fell Seal is like a strategy RPG. It's essentially where a world where the gods have decided how things are going to run, but they kind of stop paying attention, so they start giving this responsibility to people they call arbitrators. And as an arbitrator, you are almost like the police. Now, you can then ascend to be on, like, the gods' council or to be a chosen arbiter, but so much of that has to do with, like, your status and your wealth and your positioning. So this game is a really, really good game. The strategy RPG aspects of it are really good. Um, I wouldn't say they are up there with uh, some of the new games, but it really does hold true to like a Final Fantasy Tactics type game. And the story itself is engaging and very political, very interesting. I really like that aspect. Now, Monster Energy 3. Uh, wow. Uh, it, it's a lacrosse game, or not a lacrosse. I don't know why I keep saying that. It's a motocross game. If I said lacrosse before, I apologize. It's a motocross game. It, it basically, you dirt bikes, driving around. It's very fun though, and also really hard. I don't know how many times I ate it in this game. I just could not figure out how to drive these things. It's a good job I've never decided to pick up a, a dirt bike, because I would be dead now. And uh, American Fugitive is a lot like a old school GTA game. You know, like before it went in GTA 3, except for you can get out of your car, obviously. You can do a lot of stuff in this game. Uh, you can break into places. You can, you know, uh, kind of hold people hostage at times. You can commit all all sorts of crimes. You can really do a lot. It, this game, for me, was a lot of fun. I remember at uh, my old job, me and my my coworker Christine, her and I would just like play this game back and forth all day. I really enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. So going through option four, Five here. Fell Seal, definitely a smash. I'd never heard of this game. I am thoroughly, thoroughly enjoying it. Monster Energy Motocross 3. It's gonna be, honestly, it's gonna be a smash for me because they don't have any games like this. Now, if Nintendo would do its job and release like an Excite Bike or something, then maybe this would get a, a pass. But right now, it's gotta be a smash. And American Fugitive, $1.99 for that kind of fun, that is definitely a smash. On to option six. Yeah, see, this video is getting long. We have Child of Light for $4.99, and we have Lost in Random for $5.99. Now, I never actually played either one of these games until recently. I've heard of Child of Light. I think the rest of us have too, but I had a different idea of what Child of Light was. I thought it was more of like an action-adventure game. It turns out it's definitely like a, a side-scrolling RPG. You know, you, you have your elements where you are navigating, uh, you know, a map, so to speak. You're going from point A to point B, but most of the combat actually happens in uh, that turn-based, you know, RPG, you know, classic, traditional RPG style. And I have to say, like, I enjoy it far more than I thought I would. Again, I thought this was a different type of game, and uh, so playing it really put a smile on my face. Lost in Random is a game that is visually incredibly impressive. It looks wonderful. I've had a few friends that have played it, and they've all told me this is the type of game that when the, the ending credits roll, you feel like lost a little bit. Like, I don't know what game to play now. You know, I wish this game would just keep going. Like, that feeling of almost despair, if you will. So they really love the story behind it. Essentially, you are a little girl, and your sister gets chosen to be, I don't know, like some anointed person. And so this evil queen comes and takes your sister and you're on a journey to get her back. Now there's not a lot of combat, but when there is combat, it's apparently really engaging and a lot of fun. But for $5.99, I feel like it's a good price. Now Child of Light, I'm gonna smash on. And Lost in Random, I gotta smash on as well. Gotta believe my boys. Everyone says it's good. Now, finally, the last one, option seven. We start off with a game called Shining Renaissance. It's like an RPG, JRPG, really uh, very beautiful. It's really surprising that they were able to bring this to the Switch. I've only played a little bit of it, but for $5.99, it's a really good price. I believe this is one that's $39.99, but don't quote me on that. I'll have to check. Now, here's what I know about the game. It's essentially, it's a turn-based JRPG that has this big, beautiful city that you started off in, and you can turn into a dragon at some point, which is always a plus, if you ask me. But I'll be honest, it was a really slow burn when I played it, and for some reason, it just wasn't clicking with me so I kind of gave up playing it but it's one of those that I know that I want to get back to at some point and so I thought I'd bring it up especially for $5.99 that's a really good deal as I've said multiple times about the game the Castlevania collection this is all you know the OG Castlevanias a lot of, a lot of fun you know $3.99 is going to be your price point in here and let's be honest like if you like Castlevania then you should get this obviously I mean this series started an entire genre so it speaks for itself in a lot of different ways and 
then to add on to that, we have the Contra Collection. It's also $3.99. Really difficult ones in this game. Uh, $3.99 though, it's a great deal for basically all of your Contra needs. So let's go through these really quick. So Shining Renaissance, I'm going to give a smash. Uh, like I said, it's a game that I actually played and I sort of passed on, but I want to go back to it. It just, you know, sometimes things just don't line up and you just don't feel like you're ready to, to embark on that adventure, so to speak. Uh, Castlevania Collection though, I got to give us a, a pass to. I'm just not into Castlevania and I know I'm probably going to lose like a bunch of fans. It's just not my thing. And I should never say fans. I, I hate that word coming out of my mouth. Um, <laughs> and the Contra Collection is another one I got to pass on. I don't enjoy just playing a game that's difficult for difficult sake. I want to play it to achieve something, you know, and, and yes, the difficulty in itself is some sort of achievement, but I actually enjoy a story. And when I think about the time I have for video games, I want it to be a little bit more of a storytelling experience or a strategy type experience, not just, you know, difficulty. How quick can I move my thumbs kind of thing? But that's my thoughts on it. I am really curious what you guys are thinking, what option you'd go with. Like I did last week, I will post all of these down below in the comment section just so you won't have to like go through this almost 20 minute video again. I don't think I'm going to do another one this long next time. <laughs> This is a lot. And I know, I sounded like, let's just say I had some mistakes throughout this, but uh, I'm rushing through it and trying to hurry up. So I appreciate each and every one of you. If you somehow stay to the end, you are amazing. You are awesome. And you know what? I'm going to, uh, for everyone that does comment that they stay through to the end, put gift card. I'll just do a $10 gift card. Not to everyone. I'm just going to do like a random drawing, but what the hell. $10 gift card to, uh, you know, the people who enter by putting gift card in the comment section. Anyway, guys. I really appreciate it. This game, this video is going to take forever to get out the door, so I better stop now. I appreciate each and every one of you. Like always, I do love you. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye. Oh, God. I'm dead. <laughs> Just dying. Or I'm having a stroke.